Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-red Dragon's deck featuring Sarkon, the Soul of Flame as our commander, voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This 3-mana 2-4 Legendary Human Shaman gives our dragon spells a 1-mana discount, and whenever a dragon enters a battlefield under our control, we may have Sarkon become a copy of that dragon until end of turn, and the name is still Sarkon, Soul of Flame, so we can easily copy a legendary dragon without running into the legendary rule. So Sarkon's pretty sweet in this Dragon's deck, especially alongside a few dragons that may have an immediate effect if they manage to hit the opponent, thinking of maybe a Balefire Dragon that can wipe the opponent's board if it connects with the opponent, because now we can potentially copy it with Sarkon and immediately hit the opponent, which they may not be expecting. Other examples are the Ancient Dragons, like Ancient Silver Dragon gets to roll a d20 and potentially draw a ton of cards. Ancient Copper Dragon can make treasure tokens instead to give us a ton of mana. So these are the types of dragons that become much better alongside a Sarkon a Soul of Flame. So I've split up the deck into a few different categories as you can see here, and the brief rundown is that we do need some additional ramp artifacts alongside Sarkon, because the opponent might take out our commander and we're still trying to ramp into some expensive dragons, so these ramp artifacts will come in handy. I've got some unconventional ramp cards for the strategy, Dragonlord's Servant, Dragon Speaker Shaman can give our dragons a discount, so alongside Sarkon that can lead to some very explosive turns where we can play some 6 mana dragons for just 2 mana potentially. Then we've got some interaction, a few removal spells to make sure we can keep up with the opponent, couple sweepers like Sweltering Suns, and the Elder Dragon War that can also eventually make a dragon token. And then we get to the juicy part of the deck, which are of course the dragons, usually starting at 4 or 5 mana, since we want to make use of Sarkon's discount. And then there's plenty of dragons that we wouldn't mind copying with Sarkon, thinking of a Goldspan dragon that can immediately make 4 treasure tokens if we play it, and then still use that mana to cast other spells in our second main phase. And then as we mentioned, the ancient dragons are great with Sarkon as well. And then the final category is kind of the miscellaneous section, where we've got some more interaction with Wash Away as a counterspell for opposing commanders for just one mana. We've got Cyclonic Rift and the River's Rebuke as a one-sided bounce effect, since we are ramping with all those artifacts, so we can easily cast these and maybe overload a Cyclonic Rift. And then we've got our Dragonkin Berserker, can easily boast for only a couple mana and then make an additional 5-5 Dragon token if it attacked. We've got Iteration as a nice 2 for 1, Warmonger can also attack and find an extra dragon, Metamorph can copy a dragon or maybe a ramp artifact, Time Warp can take an extra turn, and Sarkon the Masterless can also make a dragon token, can turn all our Planeswalkers into 4-4 four, four dragons, and will also punish the opponent for attacking us as long as we control a dragon, so it can be pretty nice as well. And then now for a more detailed breakdown, in the ramp section we've got Wayfarer's Bobble, a recent addition on Arena, and especially in non-green decks this can be nice, can play it turn 1, sacrifice it turn 2 and fetch up a tapped basic land. Then the Orb of Dragonkind can help ramp out our dragons and can also be sacrificed to find a dragon. Then a classic 2 mana artifacts with Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol and Mindstone. We've got the two orbs, the blue one lets us cry to if we use it to cast a dragon, the red one will give our dragon haste, which can also be very nice, then a midnight clock can eventually refresh our hand. We've got dragon's horde, which also rewards us for playing dragons, picking up extra counters that we can turn into card advantage. The Heraldic Banner naming Red will pump up our team while making mana. The Celestus can give us a bit of card selection as it switches between day and night. Power Stone makes two colorless mana if we get to untap with it. And then at four mana there's a Fire Mind Vessel, Hedron Archive, and then I decided to also include Key to the Archive since we're allowing alchemy cards in this deck anyways. And then at five mana Gilded Lotus can also immediately tap for three mana the turn we play it. And then in the unconventional ramp section we've got Dragonlord Servant giving our dragons a one mana discount. Fearsome Whelp will trigger at the beginning of our upkeep, so it does need to survive a turn, but then we'll also give our dragons a perpetual 1-mana discount, and also a 1-1 one -one with Flying and Haste that can attack right away. Got the Reckless Barbarian, can be sacrificed to add double red, so we can play it early and then sacrifice it when the time is right to set up some explosive turns with Sarkon in play. And then Fable of the Mirror Breaker can help us ramp by making treasures with the Goblin Shaman. Chapter 2 gives us some card selection. And eventually the Reflection of Kiki Jiki can also be fun with Sarkon if we get to copy some of our dragons. We've got the Shaman discounting dragons by 2. Sarkon Fireblood ramps for 2, can discard and draw. And eventually can make an army of 5-5 five, five dragon tokens. And then the Wanderer to Shiv can conjure up Shivan Dragon, so we can pay homage to some of the classic dragons in Magic's history, and then can also discount our dragons with the plus one, or maybe deal three damage, so we can also use it as removal right away. And then speaking of removal, we've got a Lightning Bolt, a Braid can also deal with artifacts, 
A Dragon's Fire is quite nice if we have some expensive dragons in play or in hand to deal additional damage. Invasion of Tarkir can deal more than 2 damage when it enters, and if we transform it and get a Thunder Maw, it also deals 2 damage whenever any dragon we control attacks, so it can trigger it multiple times. We've got Spit Flame, which can be recurred from the graveyard, dealing 4 damage to a creature. Sweltering Suns to deal 3, so it doesn't kill a ruined Sarkon. And then the Elder Dragon War can deal 2 damage to each creature, or we can read ahead, maybe discard and draw, or set up a 4-4 dragon token. And then we get to our actual dragon creatures, where we have a Blazing Sky, which can either make treasure tokens or provide card advantage when it dies. Opportunistic Dragon steals an opposing artifact, removing its abilities. Thunder Break will punish the opponent for targeting our dragons with spot removal, dealing 3 damage in the process. Town Razor targets an opposing non-basic land, and then that land will deal 2 damage to his controller unless the opponent sacrifices it. And then a Desert Doom is pretty hard to remove with the ward ability, as long as it's untapped, and then if it deals damage to an opponent it can draw extra cards. Demanding Dragon will force the opponent to either take 5 damage or sacrifice a creature when it enters. Glorybringer is excellent removal as we can exert it and then deal 4 damage to a non-dragon creature. We've got the Goldspan Dragon making treasure tokens when it attacks or becomes targeted. Terror of the Peaks can also deal damage when a creature enters under our control equal to its power. A Wrathful Red Dragon also punishes the opponent for dealing damage to our dragons. Can also be pretty nice alongside our own sweeper effects dealing damage to our dragons as we get to redirect it all. And then the Dragon's Legacy can deal damage to a non-commander target whenever a dragon spell is cast equal to its mana value. And then at 6 mana, the Ancient Copper Dragon can make a ton of treasure tokens if it connects. We've got Inferno of the Star Mounts, 6-6, six, six, Uncounterable, Flying Haste and Fire Breathing. Lathalus makes a 5-5 five, five Dragon token whenever a non-token dragon enters and can also pump the team. We've got Tyrant of Care Ridges dealing 4 damage to any target when it enters, also has Fire Breathing. Balefire Dragon gets to deal damage to opposing creatures equal to the damage it dealt to the opponent. Terror of Mount Velos gives our team Double Strike. We've got Dracoseth dealing a lot of damage whenever it gets a chance to attack, also very nice alongside Sarkon. And then Ancient Silver Dragon gets to draw cards equal to the result of the d20 whenever it hits the opponent. And then we've already covered all the cards in the miscellaneous section. Our mana base has mostly blue-red dual lands, lots of basics. The Battlements can also be nice to give our dragons haste. Good Castle Embreath to maybe pump the team, the Channel Lands, Soaring City to Bounce, Crucible to make some hasty 1-1s, one -ones. and then we've got uh, Nykthos, which can also potentially make a bit of extra mana thanks to all those red mana symbols on our dragons. Mutavolt can also count as a dragon, which can maybe come in handy alongside cards like the uh, Dragon King Berserker, which wants us to have dragons in play to get a 1 mana discount on the boast ability. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. This portion of the video is brought to you by Cook and & Becker and their officially licensed Magic the Gathering art print collection. Their pieces include Kiora the Crashing Wave by Scott Fisher, Nissa of Shadowed Bows by Dave Raposa, Buzzery Cat by Toshiaki Takayama, Kalia of the Vast by Scott Fisher, and Bitter Blossom by Rebecca Gay. There will be two variants available for each one, the standard digital print and the deluxe screen print, which can come in different sizes. Each print will also come with a certificate of authenticity, and I love what they've done with the mana symbols on those. Every order of a premium print has a 1 in 10 chance of receiving an exclusive not-for-sale print of Black Lotus by Christopher Rush. This is a limited edition print run, so get yours while they're still available, and check out their website using the link in the video description, and any purchases will help support the channel, so that's always very much appreciated. And now back to the gameplay. Okay, we're on the play, facing Moldrotha plus Giruda, and uh, yeah, our hand's not bad. Cold Steel Heart gives us some 2-man acceleration, turn 3 Sarkon, and then we could already play Inferno on the following turn. Although now Lathless is probably the preferred choice. Turn to Florahedron. There is an argument for playing Sarkon Fireblood, which is maybe harder for the opponent to interact with. And then I can still play a Lathless. I think we still try and play our commander here. Need to get creature removal out of the way at some point. And especially once we play our Silver Dragon, it would be nice to copy with a Sarkon, but yep, there's Binding. Also could have taken care of Fireblood. So, not what we wanted to see. Now we can replay our commander once again. 
And then next turn, no matter what, we can slam down a 6-mana dragon. Definitely prefer playing Silver Dragon with Sarkon Soul of Flame on the battlefield so we can get immediate value. Otherwise, it's a pretty big target for removal. So we're point off to a great start. Five mana available, so could see another four drop here. They could also put Giruda in hand. It's going to be Hedron Archive plus maybe Giruda to hand. Yep. Okay. So, a little short of casting our Silver Dragon, which is the ultimate goal. But I can play a Mindstone followed by a Lathless. That seems pretty good. And then now if we play a Dragon, we get to make an extra token. Okay. So hoping Soul of Flame survives. Lathless is now probably the bigger target for removal. But our opponent could just run out Giruda here, we'll see. And there's Giruda. We've got some dragons they could hit as well. Who opponent found Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. That's a good one. Doesn't interfere with our plan of flying over, at least. Alright, so Jenga Taxius Core Augur instead. So this reduces our hand size by 7, which would normally make us discard down to 0 cards end of turn. But our Ancient Blue Dragon has kind of a trick up its sleeve, because it says we have no maximum hand size if we can connect with the opponent. And uh, no maximum hand size beats hand size reduced by 7, so we'll be able to keep all those cards in hand. Alright, just gotta go for it here. Ancient Silver Dragon, I think is uh, more fun than going for Inferno. Even though Inferno would be guaranteed to resolve. I'll take action, copy the Silver Dragon, and get in there. 13, alright, draw 13 cards, not bad. And yeah, can still run out a 1-drop here. Don't get to discount from Sarkon anymore, otherwise I could have ran out the 2-mana uh, dragon here. But we'll go for Bauble instead and pass a turn. And yes, we can see here, unaffected by Jenga Taxius. Sweet. Our opponent sacrifices Hedron Archive, so they're digging. Thassa is next, that can flicker Giruda to put more creatures into play. But yeah, that doesn't really solve their problems. So Thassa flickers Giruda, what do they mill? Just a Meyer Triton here, not that exciting. Chupacabras, what they really needed here to take out our dragons one by one. And our opponent explodes, awesome. Not every day that you get to beat the Jenga Taxius making you discard. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing first sliver with Kiruga as companion. Probably implies five color good stuff as opposed to sliver tribal. Yeah, our hand uh, could struggle against a value pile, but I'm still gonna try it. An early fable against the deck without any cheap plays could be effective if our shaman token gets to snowball. And then Sarkon can ramp out a Terror of the Peaks. few ways we can curve out here. I think I prefer Idol over Servants. Three mana for Chromatic Lantern, which will fix all their mana. And uh, yeah, opponent could already play the first Sliver next turn if they'd like. So, can get Fable going, although the Shaman's gonna pale in comparison to a 7-7 first sliver. Could also go for Sarkon, which can ramp out Terror next turn. I think I need to sculpt my hand with Chapter 2 from Fable. Want to maybe try and set up a turn where we play Sarkon, copy it with Terror, have double Terror in play, and then still have enough mana to play a dragon afterwards. For now, Opponent hit a mana geode. And we'll discard at least one mountain, maybe even double mountain, and keep Servant. Possible our opponent's got a few sweepers in their deck, and then Servant's not the best. Let's try that. 
can play Celestus and Sarkon. And then next turn, hope to set up the play I mentioned of uh, getting double Terror of the Peaks in play. And hopefully another creature to follow it up. Fable of the Mirror Breaker also pretty effective alongside Terror once we get to copy it with our Reflection of Kiki Jiki. But I have to imagine the opponent's got some interaction lined up here. The Fairy could bounce her token. It's gonna bounce Sarkon instead. Back to hand. Okay. So, could replay Sarkon. And then use Fireblood to play Terror, but then I feel like we're overextending into a Sweeper. Could still take out the Fairy if we animate Guardian Idol. Which is also worth considering. But our opponent does get to kill a creature for free, and they... I guess are unlikely to have interaction with Keruga's companion. Sure. Fireblood's not that great in the face of a 7-7 that can pressure it, so this makes sense. Alright, this looks like a Sweeper's incoming. Do we chump with Reflection? No, let's just take 7. At least it forces him to go for it. Solve the equation. What are we getting? Time Warp? Supreme Verdict? Yep. Well, now I can deploy Fireblood. Alathlus isn't bad either. So I can play Fireblood, make two mana, still play Lathless. Or we can redeploy Soul of Flame, although can't use Fireblood to make mana for it, so we'll have to use my treasure. Yeah, let's go for Lathless. Seems pretty good here. You will feel the lick of might demands power. And then uh, next turn we could get double Terror of the Peaks going with Lathless, would be pretty fun. Rusko is next. Okay. Four mana. Four Uro. So it doesn't look like they have any interaction lined up. Which is good news for our Terror of the Peaks plan. If we can find another dragon, that would be great. Expressive Iteration. Alright, so five mana for Sarkon. Make two with Fireblood. So I can still cast Terror of the Peaks. Or I can just Iteration and then play Terror of the Peaks. This happens when a dragon enters, so I'll be able to take out Rusko with the Terror of the Peaks ability. Yeah, let's just Iterate here. Okay, Inferno in hand. And then we'll play the Islands. And then I'm certainly considering Sarkon still as an option. And I'll be able to play Terror afterwards. I will call the dragons. And attack for six. Alright, opponent needs another sweeper here. And then we still have a nice follow-up with Inferno. Sarkon's also slowly reaching ultimate. Still gonna take us a few turns. Mastermind's acquisition, that's gonna get another sweeper here. Probably a farewell or some four mana board wipe. Don't think they can get something that also deals with Sarkon, unless maybe a reverse rebuke. Yeah, I guess that does it. But uh, yeah, not as bad as something that actually kills everything. Okay, so where do we begin? I want to try and get some haste damage in, perhaps, with Inferno. Could play Sarkon to make mana. That's not a bad starting point. Could also try and deploy Terror. And then deal damage directly by playing more creatures afterwards. Let's say I go Sarkon. 4 mana terror, can't quite copy with metamorph. So Fireblood, make 2 mana for Inferno and can 
pump it once as well. Looks okay. Hit for seven. And then now with Sarkon in play, it's going to be easier to trigger Terror of the Peaks the same turn we play it, especially with Metamorph. If our opponent had enough mana, they could have tutored up like a Ruinous Ultimatum and destroyed everything, so Riv's Rebuke at the end of the day was not that bad. Now an Invasion of Alara finds Oracle of Moldaya, Fabor Elder. That's acceptable. Still a 5-5 thanks to the battle here. So they can't replay the first sliver this turn. And yeah, if they don't interact, there's a good chance we can kill them. So our opponent's bringing back Uro to gain 3 up to 18. With Keruga, we don't need to fear any cheap interaction. Alright. Opponent puts Keruga in hand. And we get to untap. So, can we deal 16 damage? Cyclonic Rift's also nice. But let's see here. If I play Sarkon for 3, add 2 mana, then I'll have 7 mana for Dragons, 4 on Terror, 3 on Metamorph copying Terror. I summon you. First play Sarkon, then play Terror, and then we'll have 3 mana left for Metamorph. And then Metamorph, don't want to copy Inferno because it's legendary, but another Terror of the Peaks will do. So that's 10 damage. And then 6 more from the attack. Sweet. There might have been other ways for lethal here, but uh, I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Sauron the Dark Lord. Our hand seems acceptable. Could use a few dragons, but Iteration can maybe find them. And then having a one-mana answer to Sauron's pretty nice. Turn to Boots. Gonna wait on Iteration until we have more mana available. And then we could play the Orb of Dragonkind, which now does make mana of any color. And if this gets countered or removed, it's probably not as bad as Dragon's Horde, which could draw some more cards in a grindy matchup, potentially. Opponent uses Demolition Field to fix their own mana here. Get a Mountain. And then next turn we could maybe double spell. Although we'll have to wait and see if we want to keep up Wash Away. In case our opponent's got some ramp. So four mana. And Fable of the Mirror Breaker is technically a ramp since a shaman could make a treasure. And we're gonna attack with it right away. Pretty nice. So can't even spit flame it anymore. So we could abrade the boots and then kill the shaman, but the damage has been done. Probably play Sarkon as a blocker for the Shaman token. Keep up Wash Away, although we can expect him to have removal for Sarkon. So, yeah, it's pretty tough. That Shaman's kind of annoying. Could also just play Horde and then keep up Wash Away and maybe abrade the boots end of turn. Sure. Just don't have high confidence in Sarkon surviving here. Just gotta hope they tap out for Sauron and we get to counter it. Disruption and Mindstone discarded. Land untapped. Shaman attacks. And it's gonna be a Nazgul next. Okay. His opponent tempts the ring. Could take out Nazgul with one of our removal spells. Shaman becomes a ring bear. Well, let's just uh, maybe Spitflame Nazgul at this point. If 
find Signet. So, time for iteration, perhaps. Can put a dragon in hand and hit our land drop with it. Well, we found a dragon, not an exciting one. So we'll grab Dragon's Fire. And then we can play Island right now. So could deploy Sarkon, could abrade Boots, kill the Shaman, and then still have Wash Away available. Maybe that's the preferred sequence here. So I'll put an upkeep stop. And then a braid now. And then now Dragon's Fire. Keep my island untapped for Wash Away in case I can mess with my artifact somehow. Bonum does now have a reflection of Kiki Jiki. Could be problematic as well. And the one ring as card draw is pretty good here. Alright, Desert Doom. So is it time for Sarkon? Looks like it. And then I could still play Desert Doom and keep up Wash Away. And then now I might want to keep Dragon's Horde untapped to draw with it. If I don't need to counter, but I'm just going to counter Desert Doom instead. Makes sense. Alright, things aren't going great. Just need to find a dragon real bad. Let's get this out of the way. Other opponent can easily replay it next turn. Banner is not what we needed. Guess we'll attack. Opponent could just chump with a token. Or they can keep it to refresh their hand after deploying Sauron. Opponent will chump. Not the best card to copy with Reflection, because it's a 0, zero with a plus 1 counter on it. And there's Sauron. Come on, dragon. That's a dragon. Pretty good one too. Can give it haste with Orb. And decimate the opponent's board. Unless they've got a Pact of Negation here, which is maybe what they're digging for. They didn't find it. And uh, Sarkon copies Balefire. Attacks, decimates the opponent's board, and that's game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Karamonix, potentially a Rat Colony deck. Our hand's decent. If we can ramp out an overloaded Cyclonic Rift, that's one way to win. And Goldspan can generate quite a bit of mana. Play Orb next turn, probably Horde. Could also play Sarkon, that's maybe still better. If we can curve Sarkon into Goldspan Dragon, and there's a first of many rat colonies. So we'll play Sarkon. And then next turn, four mana Goldspan. Copy it with Sarkon, make two treasures. Okay, it's not all rats, there's a Gix as well. Desert Doom's interesting, but Goldspan seems better for now. And then we could still play an Invasion of Tarkir afterwards. Could also save our treasures for Overloaded Cyclonic Rift. Or we could go Dragon Sword into Invasion, which I kind of like. We'll get to take out Gix, revealing Desert Doom. And then next turn we could still maybe Overload a Cyclonic Rift. And yeah, that's just too much for the Rant deck to handle. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Frodo, Sauron's Bane. Our hand's not bad. Turn 2, Dragon's Fire as removal. Turn 3, could play Sarkon, hoping for a turn 4 Goldspain. And now with the land, that's more likely. Can wait for Frodo to level up a few times before taking it out. But it is the type of card that can win the game by itself if they can tempt the ring enough times. 
So it just hits us for one. And the Swiftfoot Boots. Okay, now a Dragon Whelp could be worth playing, even though I give up the opportunity to take out Frodo in response to them maybe equipping the Boots. Although, I guess the Whelp doesn't do a whole lot, since we can still curve Sarkon into Goldspan regardless. So I think I will keep up Dragon's Fire. Take the one from Frodo if it attacks. But if they try and equip it, we'll try and remove it. Alright, so they're gonna force our hands. May as well reveal a dragon in case they have a way to pump up their toughness. Get to deal an extra point of damage here. Alright, Frodo down, and we wasted one mana so they cannot replay Frodo this turn. Although they might have Sam's Desperate Rescue to bring it back, or Samwise the Stouthearted. At least goes back to hand and not in play. Okay, time for Sarkon, and then Sweltering Suns could also be an effective removal spell here. Opponent knows we have a gold span in hand. So if they can kill Sarkon, they probably will, but their deck might not have a ton of removal effects. Mostly focused on protecting Frodo and getting it through. Samwise is a ring bearer, but Sarkon at 2 power can still block it, so our opponent's gonna pass. Possible they have removal for a gold span available, but we would still copy it with Sarkon, so that's good enough for me. I would still get to make a bunch of treasure in the process. We'll attack. And then we can Sweltering Sun's second main. And still play Bobble. That works. So now our opponent will have to replay Frodo for 3 mana. And in the meantime they're getting beat down by a gold span. Could use another expensive dragon here. To copy with Sarkon. Mangara. Can potentially draw them some cards. And gain some life as well here if they attack for 2. But they stay back. Alright, did not find any exciting dragons. Could still copy Fearsome Whelp with Sarkon just to fly over Mangara. So, sure. Play Lotus. Make red. Sacrifice Bauble. Can get an island. And play a Fearsome Whelp. And Sarkon's gonna turn into a Fearsome Whelp. Sack for six. And see what's next. Gold span down, claim the precious. Leaves behind one treasure token at least. A ring to level two. And Loran can destroy a Gilded Lotus, although we've got plenty of mana to work with. So that's not too bad. Opponent does get to draw and discard. So their hand is improving every turn. Our hand's not looking all that great right now. So just hit for three. Unless we don't want Mangara to draw. Yeah, I guess we'll just hit with Sarkon. Our opening hand was great. Sweltering Suns was a nice play. But I haven't found another good dragon since Goldspan. A level 2 ring gives the opponent a ton of card selection. There's also Minas Tirith that could draw additional cards. And a Smothering Tithe, we also don't really mind. And Ornithopter. Ooh, nice Glorybringer, that's what we needed. So I'll pay the Smothering Tithe tax, play Glorybringer. Copy it with Sarkon, and then we can take out Loran and Ornithopter if we'd like. Probably exert with Sarkon in case we don't find another dragon next turn. And then not exert a regular Glorybringer, so that can maybe exert next turn. And we can take out Ornithopter since Mangara is hexproof. To clear a blocker here. Boon falls to two. 
and we'll pass it back. So Sarkon doesn't untap, but we still have Glorybringer available. So on the board, that would be a lethal next turn, even if they gain two. Might have wanted to play the Mountain, so we can pay the Smothering Tithe tax if they activate Loran to draw. Thieves' Tools good with uh, Frodo, but they haven't redeployed it yet. Minas Tirith draws. Can they find an answer to Glorybringer? We get to untap. And a Wrathful Red Dragon's not bad. Pay the tax. So if we just attack with Glorybringer, that would be game. Could run out Wrathful Red Dragon on the off chance that our opponent has an Igancho to deal 4 damage. That way we get to deal 4 to the opponent regardless. Could also wait to deploy it until next turn so we can copy it with Sarkon. Although that does mean giving the opponent a couple more draw steps. The fact that they didn't redeploy Frodo is a little suspicious here. So, yeah, I think I still play the Wrathful now. And then see what happens. Might as well copy with Sarkon. And then might as well exert, because if uh, our opponent doesn't remove Glorybringer, they die. And if they do, I might as well kill another creature on the way. The Fairy's Protection, fair enough. That keeps him alive. That was a reason not to exert Glorybringer. Although we still have a Wrathful Red Dragon lined up. Opponents may be trying to wait until they can play Frodo, give it haste, and get the ring to level 4 all in one turn to kill us out of nowhere. But we have a 5-5 five five on defense, as well as a 1-1 one one that can maybe block a ring bear. All out attack. Nope. Opponent passes. Draws with Loran. I'll pay the 2. And our opponent explodes, alright, so kind of a interesting game here against Frodo, but we got there in the end. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Calyx, guided by fate. And our hand's got potential, if we can uh, connect with Copper Dragon and maybe pick up some more expensive spells. That can result in some pretty explosive turns. For now, play our Fearsome Whelp. Can discount Copper Dragon next turn. And then Sarkon, probably going to be the play next turn. Although Orb to give Copper Dragon haste is also pretty interesting here. Barbarian, okay. So, yeah, let's go for Sarkon, and then next turn we can uh, turn Sarkon into an Ancient Copper Dragon, which is kind of like giving Copper Dragon haste. Could see removal, could see Calyx. Our opponent removes Sarkon, next turn we can play an artifact into maybe a Barbarian. Audacity on Envoy. 4-3 First Strike and Flying could be a decent blocker against our Dragons, although 6-5 can still attack past it. Alright, so time for the Fireworks. We've got 4 mana available, probably just Ancient Copper Dragon, copy with Sarkon attack and see what happens. Wouldn't be able to give it haste. Roll the 10. Not bad. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough. 10 treasure can deploy all our artifacts here if we'd like. And then Horde can draw if we play Barbarian as well. We've got a braid for either Envoy or Calyx. And that's game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Galadriel. Blue green, potentially landfall. And our hand's not bad. Cold Steel Hearts. Can uh, set up Sarkon and Dragon Speaker Shaman, and then if we get a Dracoseth in play, copied with Sarkon, that could decimate the opponent's board. Or just ramping into a overloaded Cyclonic Rift with Cold Steel into Firemind Vessel could also be effective. So, wouldn't mind drawing an extra land or two. Fabled Passage as their first land implies that they don't have a ton of other lands in hand, otherwise it can be a very useful way to enable landfall twice. Cold Steel, name red. 
And then best case scenario, draw land next turn. So I can play Vessel. Lost Isle Calling, Pun's committed to the Scry theme. And we'll play Vessel. And then next turn I can double spell more easily. And there's Galadriel. And a Signet. So we can play Dragon Speaker plus Sarkon. And then next turn play a 4 mana Draquiseth. That's a bargain. Scour all possibilities, so they can scry. They want to try and keep a land on top to put in play with Galadriel. And Lost Isle Calling picks up a counter. Can eventually take an extra turn, but that's going to take a second. Grey Havens put in play, that's nice. Gets to scry and potentially put another land in play with Galadriel. And they found a forest, so pretty good turn. They still have a land left, a Zalfurn Void to scry one keep on top, so that's probably not our land. Yeah, the Galadriel deck is pretty sweet when it gets to go off. And the Scry lands are especially powerful in it. Hoping they don't have any instant speed interaction here to mess up our plan. Wouldn't mind seeing another creature we can take out with Dracoseth. Opponent's gonna void just and bounce Dragon Speaker Shaman. Alright, going for the creature that gives a 2 mana discount as opposed to 1 mana discount. Although we can still play Dracoseth here. No mana to spare, so can play Signet first, but that's alright. Attack, 4 damage to the opponent, 3 to Galadriel. And another 7. We still have our Dracoseth in play, but admittedly our opponent's got a lot of mana, so it's not too difficult to replay Galadriel. And Lost Isle Calling already has four counters, so they're not too far from taking an extra turn with it. Primeval Titan, that's a pretty good card as it turns out. What can they find? Maybe a few more Scry lands to enable Lost Isle Calling? Nope. So yeah, go for Desert Doom. Maybe after playing a Dragon Speaker Shaman. And then it's a 2 mana Desert Doom, can still Cyclonic Rift for 2 if needed. And Smash. And this would be lethal. And we get to cross the finish line, awesome. Yeah, good to see Galadriel combo off here, but luckily we had Draquiseth to seal the deal. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Radagast the Brown. So a creature, maybe a ramp or value strategy. Our hands could use a dragon, admittedly, but uh, still pretty good with turn two Cold Steel Heart. Metamorph to copy a dragon once we find it. And uh, Time Warp to take an extra turn. Okay, can play turn three Wanderer to Shiv, which can conjure up Shivan Dragon. Or maybe kill a mana creature here. Nope, it's going to be a Mind Stone. Can't take that out. Hidden Archive is tempting, but I think I still Sarkon here. Get Sheevan Dragon. And then next turn we'll be able to give it a discount at the very least. Nylia gives the opponent's creatures a 1 mana discount. All land is good. Okay, so we have options. Not time for Time Warp until we get a few more creatures in play. Can go for Hedron Archive, and then Metamorph can copy Archive. That sets up a lot of mana, so kind of like that idea. And then maybe just get another Sheevan Dragon before we discount them all. We're a bit light on red mana, admittedly, so that's potentially a bottleneck for us. Although Sarkon also, I guess, fixes mana with a plus one ability, so never mind. A Goreclaw gives expensive creatures a two mana discount. And a Cemetery Prowler for more discount. Nylee up to four devotion, so close to being a creature. Alright, time to 
use the other plus one here unless we want to take out Goreclaw, which I suppose is tempting to. So how much mana are we working with? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Could be a good time for Time Warp as well. Could also Sweltering Suns and then kill Prowler with Sarkon. Yeah, maybe that's even better. Three to Prowler, Sweltering Suns. Can play Sheevan Dragon, but can play Soul of Flame. And pass it back. And then hope that they can get back up to 5 Devotion. And then now Time Warp is looking a lot better. And that's good enough for a concession. Opponent knows about Double Sheevan Dragon. They did not know about our Time Warp, but that would have been the final nail. Alright, so we got to see our blue-red Sarkon deck in action. And yeah, overall the deck's pretty fun to play, especially if you get to curve Sarkon into some 5-mana dragon and uh, get to connect. Also very fun with the ancient dragons that are sometimes a little bit slow without haste, but with Sarkon it's kind of like they have haste if you get to connect right away. So there's a few dragons that definitely become better with Sarkon as your commander. And then having blue as a secondary color gives you a few more options compared to the mono red dragons decks that you might have with other Sarkons. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.